Thanks to the power of macros, non-professional audio is two clicks away. While Audacity does seem like magic, make your life easy by getting a decent quality microphone close to your mouth. Then look to reduce any noises or echoes. We're aiming for better, not perfect, which is why I want you to follow along with your own audio. Because on your first time opening Audacity, you're going to see how not perfect it is. You can fix this by going to Edit Preferences Interface and then Theme. Congratulations! As a prize, I've linked to the official support site and manual in the description. You can open a saved project, audio, or video file. Opening a video file will import the audio. Here you can see the left and right tracks of the stereo audio. This is a mono track for my Zoom F2. Even edited. No one wants to hear a laptop mic. USB Blue Yeti mics were popular about a decade ago. They're a great entry point for talking head or video essays. The one downside is that they were made larger and heavier than they really needed to be for marketing purposes. Audio peaking or clipping is the one potential problem that will require manual work. Peaks or clipping can come from loud noises, a car backfiring, mechanical machinery, touching the microphone, or even touching the microphone connector. Viewers, especially if they're wearing headphones, hate clipping. Audio peaks also need to be removed for the compressor and normalization effects to work correctly. To use the amplify effect, left click and drag to select a portion of audio with an audio peak, then go to Effect, Volume and Compression, Amplify. Using a negative value will lower the volume, lower the volume. Choosing a low enough number will effectively mute selection. Use custom shortcuts to speed up your workflow. They can be set by going to Edit, Preferences, Shortcuts. I search for effects by name. I have the five effects I use set to Alt plus 1 through 5 in the order that I use them in. Setting up shortcuts right now will allow you to follow along with your own audio. Select the command you want to make a shortcut for, then go down to the box and enter a key combination, then press set and you have your shortcut. Alt plus 6 is set up to run my custom macro, which will run the last four effects. 95% of the time, Alt plus 6 or whatever shortcut you decide will be all you need to do. The noise reduction effect does a great job at reducing background noises, such as cooling fan noise from lights. To use this effect, the first thing you'll need to do is to select a section of audio that only contains ambient background noises. Then go to Effect, Noise Removal and Repair, Noise Reduction. First, press the Get Noise Profile button. Once that's done, select the entire track by either clicking on the title or Control and A. Pressing Control R will repeat the last effect. What you want to do is this will apply the noise reduction profile to the entire audio clip. Or you can also go to the effects menu and select repeat last effect. And the final way is to reselect the noise reduction effect through the menu. There are two other effects in the noise removal submenu that might be helpful to you. The first is click removal. This can be helpful if you have mouse clicks or maybe other mechanical clicking that you want to remove. Clip fix reduces the volume of sections that are too loud. You'll have to play around with the settings in each of these to figure out what works best for your situation. The noise gate effect can help reduce echoes. I have played with the settings, but I'm not sure how successful I've been as I'm not even sure I need to use the effect. Three settings will need to be fine-tuned for every speaker and environment. If you're having problems with echoes, you're going to have to watch other videos that go into more detail on the specific effect. Then you're going to have to learn how to dial in those settings. And I would recommend trying to do some basic acoustic treatment to your recording space.
The compressor reduces the dynamic range of audio. It does this by lowering high levels and increasing low levels. Through this compression, audio will have less variations between the highs and the lows, making it easier to listen to. To use the effect, go to Effect Volume and Compression Compressor. There are a bunch of different presets to choose from. I would suggest spending some time playing around, listening to a few of them, and choosing one that you like. Normalize will raise or lower the volume of a selection to match your desired level. This allows you to set the volume of your audio to what viewers expect. To use the effect, go to Effect, Volume and Compression, Normalize. The Normalize Peak Amplitude to value represents how close you want the loudest part of the audio to get to the clipping threshold. I use a value of negative 2.5 decibels so that it is close to how loud ads are. Though I'm not sure if I should set my volume to be louder, so using a value of negative 2 decibels or maybe negative 1.5. After that, you should be ready to export the edited audio. To do that, go to File, Export Audio, or you can press Shift Control E. Make sure to select the stereo option if you have a mono audio source. I would not change the format or any other settings. It's also possible to add this step along with closing Audacity to a macro. Creating a macro is what's going to save you an incredible amount of time. To do this, go to Tools, Macro Manager. Click New and then give your macro a name. Then click Insert. In order to use the noise reduction effect, an audio selection needs to be made so that a noise profile can be created. The select command is used to do that. I suggest you stay silent for approximately 10 seconds at the beginning of the recording. That gives a one to two second buffer for any fumbling with equipment. And then you can select five seconds or so that can then be used to get a noise profile. Insert the noise reduction effect. Double clicking it will bring up the options. You'll want to select Get Noise Profile. Next, insert the Select All command. Then insert the noise reduction effect again. Double click, go in, and this time run the effect on the entire audio track. Then insert Select All again. If you're going to use the noise gate, you can insert that now. It will have the same settings as the last time it was used. This is also the same for the compressor and normalize effects, which you will also want to add. Once you're done with that, you'll have everything done in a macro that was covered in this video, and you can go through and add any of the other commands that you want, including the export and even quitting the application. All video editors have easy ways to sync audio to a video clip. I use Kden Live because it's free and my laptop isn't capable of running DaVinci Resolve. That said, I have been learning the features of Kden Live and it has made my editing process much faster. Be on the lookout because I will eventually make a tutorial going over my process. And I'm also looking forward to the new version of GIMP, which should be out very soon.